This video will explore the business case for cloud computing. In other words, why would you move something to the cloud? Should you move everything to the cloud? Does the cloud make sense? How does it work for your enterprise and your organization? You've probably heard about cloud computing or the cloud. So what's the business case for cloud computing? As a business owner or business decision maker, why should you be interested in knowing about the cloud? Well, you're only going to move applications, services, or infrastructure to the cloud if it makes business sense. So does it save money? Does it save time? Does it deliver more customers, more services, or other types of efficiencies? If it doesn't, then a hybrid model where some parts of your offering are in the cloud and some remain on-premises, or a fully on-premises model may still continue to be your best option. As a business decision maker, you need to understand a little bit about the cloud and the business case for cloud computing in order to make that decision. Now, cloud computing is often compared to and contrasted with or confused with hosted services. Now, there is a lot of similarity between a simple and straightforward hosted service and a fully cloud computing environment. Some providers or vendors will offer both, and many times the lines between them will be blurred. Now, that's okay. It's probably, in fact, useful and flexible to be able to move between the two types of contracts as needed. But you should understand the differences between the two. Cloud computing is generally seen as more flexible. And this is why we mean that. What sort of things do we see in cloud computing that make it more flexible? The first example is elasticity or scalability. And this is the idea of adding new instances on demand or upsizing an existing service, again, on demand, or being able to downsize existing services or remove instances when you don't need them anymore. Or you can turn off and park an instance or a service without deleting it. So if you think of any part of your business that is seasonal and how this might play into that. Now, in a traditional model where you're hosting all of the equipment locally, you don't have the option to easily and quickly upsize and just increase the capacity of something. You still have to evaluate it, order in parts or new equipment, get it installed, that kind of thing. In a cloud environment, you just click a button and your service moves to a larger or bigger provisioned environment. And certainly downsizing or turning off instances in a physical environment is a whole other kettle of fish because if you've committed to having those servers present, it's very hard to turn them off or to downsize them. Now, where does hosted services fit into that? If the hosted service allows you that flexibility of upsizing, downsizing, adding new and removing easily, quickly, and efficiently, then it's pretty close to a cloud computing experience. If, on the other hand, your hosted service is very rigid and very contractually based and insistent on exactly what the case must be from month to month, then it's less like a cloud computing scenario. Now, of course, what you use determines what you pay. I have a friend who worked for a cloud provider for many years, and he was fond of saying, if you still pay for it when it's off, it's not cloud computing. And that really captures a lot of the essence of the flexibility of cloud computing. You're allowed to turn off resources when you're not using them and stop paying for them. Now, charges will be there and charges are based on use, such as processing or memory, network communications, and storage. Now, often that storage is something that persists. If you turn off an instance for a service, but leave those bits there in the cloud provider, they're still going to want to continue to build for that storage. Now, there are some elements that decrease the flexibility in order to increase your savings. You can contract to pre-buy or gain lower rates. And generally speaking, those contracted rates can be shared across multiple projects and instances. And you may be able to select various types of priority or availability that affect the rate that you're offered. But cloud computing is almost always a pay per use or pay as you go model. Cloud computing is on demand. It's very fast to turn on or off services. They're self-serviced almost all the time using a web portal or scripting. That means that an authorized person logs into a portal provided by the cloud provider and specifies what they want their cloud services to be and to do. 
Often there's a form of automation involved so that if you don't want to have a user sitting in front of a web browser, there's usually some kind of script or API where your automation at your site can actually control what happens in the cloud as well. Cloud computing can be known for its resiliency. So cloud providers often offer a varying level of redundancy, fault tolerance, or high availability. Now there's little nuances between those. And if you're familiar with them, that's great. If not, they're related concepts, but there are little differences between the types of high availability and fault tolerance that are available. You want to be careful that you understand what you're getting when you purchase a cloud service. If you are not paying for redundancy or fault tolerance, you may not have any protection against system failure. And that's part of the, you get what you pay for. If someone just wants a simple, quickly, and highly disposable environment for, say, testing, then that's going to cost less than a fully highly available, fault-tolerant, redundant system serving millions of users across the world. But it's often easier to build resiliency into your cloud-based solution working in conjunction with your cloud provider than it is to get the same level of availability in your own internal environment. Another hallmark of cloud computing that adds to the business case is its ability to move workloads around. So by workload, we mean a service, an application, or a complete virtual machine. And these can be moved as needed. They're supported by multiple servers. So we can move an application from one server to another, perhaps to gain capacity or for fault tolerance. Most cloud providers have multiple data centers and you can often move workloads between the data centers themselves. Again, that's perhaps for geographical fault tolerance or to be closer to your customers. Now, speaking of being closer to your customers, most of the largest cloud providers also have multiple regions and your agreement with them or your contract can specify which of the regions your data and services live in. This allows you to operate different operations in say Europe than from North America. Again, this might be for fault tolerance, but more likely it's to reach a wider audience or to be closer to your users. Whatever the way you want to set it up, the ability to move these workloads around between servers, data centers, or regions is key to meeting your organization's needs, whether that's for high availability reasons, to manage the updating of servers, or to be closer to the customer. This availability of having movement of workloads between different locations is an important part of understanding how cloud computing can help your business. It is important to understand as you look at the business case and value your options, that cloud computing, at least in terms of the public cloud, is a multi-tenancy proposal. The cloud is a shared resource. Your workload, that is your service or application, may run alongside of someone else's, even a competitor. Now, private clouds are the main exception to this. Private clouds are clouds that operate in the same flexible way, but they're maintained by your own IT department or by a contractor specifically for your use and exclusively for your use. But security does matter, and especially in the public cloud. You need to understand how your provider is ensuring that even though the resources are shared between multiple tenants or multiple customers, your data is protected and no leakage can occur between them. Exclusivity comes at a cost. The more exclusivity you insist on having and get from a provider, the closer you are to a hosted services model and the more money you'll pay for that. So again, as you evaluate your business case, that's one of the key things to consider. Are there things which we cannot afford to move into a public environment and we need to keep very close to the chest? Are there other things that we can and should move into a cloud environment to gain these other benefits? <music>